gravel climbs, here we go. Going up Blockers Road, pretty butte climb, loved it a lot. 5% full care, I think it is, but it's got some very steep ramps and some downhill. So here we go, Lantern Rouge, Patrick, you might know him, uh, his YouTube channel, is called Lantern Rouge, sorry, a bit tired. Um, and anyway, so we're chilling up, chilling up the climb, nothing too crazy wattage at this moment in time. It sort of surges a bit, but mainly it's quite chill. I don't really know where I was going, so I didn't want to, didn't really want to do anything. Uh, just go off the front, let's probably get lost or not know where the climb was, which I did at some point because I did end up stopping on this climb. Um, managed to get a top 10. Uh, all the detail will be at the end of the vid, so please don't skip to that and watch the rest of it. But if you do want to know my power, I think my power was at 273 for 14 minutes, but that's sort of irrelevant because there was lots of downhills. And I got a top 10 Strava time, so I could probably improve that if I didn't stop on the climb, which would have been quite, quite handy. But anyway, it's not super steep. It's like 8%. You can see my cadence is pretty poor just because... I don't really have the gears. I'm on a 36.28. My 32 doesn't work. I am going to get it fixed. But at the moment, you can see Patrick ahead of me. He's got a lot better cadence than me. He's got a 34.32, I think. Um, and I'm down to like 70 cadence or whatever. And, you know, we're going up like a decent, decently steep uh, steep pitch. But nothing nothing mental, to be honest. Um, I don't think the gradient's is 100% right. Um, but anyway... It was quite. It was nice, nice climb. The first part is like concrete, and then it moves on to like a gravel, gravel section. Um, there's a bit of downhill technical gravel. Well, not technical gravel descent, but there's just a nice like corner, which is quite hard to take um, full speed. And then there's some steep pitches at the end. Um, it's really a nice climb. It's so chilled actually down here. It was a really hot day today, about 33, 34 degrees, um, and we were at like five. We were like left at six a.m. or something. Um, but down here it was like 20 degrees or 22 degrees, which is very, very chill. Um, I'm not sure why it changes so much the temperature. I guess it's just lower elevation and like protected by the trees, but it was a lot cooler. When we descended, we were getting a little bit, little bit chilly. Um, so you can see the numbers again here on, on insane 232.40. It's starting to flatten off a little bit and we're picking up the speed a little bit in a bit. Uh, so my heart rate uh, is always a bit skeptical if we actually talk about heart rate, but I will on this on this particular video. So it's like one seventy beats per minute. Normally for me, it's like two hundred to two o five is sort of where my max is. Um, so you can see I'm I'm really not not stressing that much. But it just depends. Like when it's cold, I just can't get my heart rate as high. But when I'm excited, I can get up to like one ninety or one ninety five and hold that for like a good five ten minutes. So it all sort of does depend quite a lot on the day. Um, so you can see here, it sort of starts to flatten off. It's a really nice road surface, actually, this tarmac. Um, very smooth, quite fast. And you can start to see that we're picking up the speed a bit. It's getting out into, like, 5%. So this is when the draft is very useful. Um, and we're about to get onto a bit of gravel. You can see here in Adelaide, there's just, like, there's no cars, there's no traffic. Like, yeah, we were quite early this morning. But, like, this is probably 10 kilometres, 10, 15 kilometres from... Um, like center of Adelaide, um, and we're here, just like no cars, no traffic, like it's insane. Um, and so on to the first bit of Strada Bianca of um of the year in Adelaide. Um, I was a bit nervous on the descent. I I didn't really follow uh, Patrick that much because I was a bit like don't wanna don't wanna slide out or anything. But actually, the it's a bit hard to tell. But this gravel is more like it's more like concrete, I guess, with like some sort of chip sealants on the top. It's not really like gravel where there's no real base to it. So the base is more of a concrete and then there's just some gravel sort of on the on the top, but not really that much. So you can go pretty fast down these descents. Um, I mean, I just guess there'd be no cars, which I don't think, which there weren't. Bit of a twig there, but it's, it's pretty safe actually def descending down here. It's not as sketchy as I thought it could be. Um, I mean, the, the problem is on when you're on your road bike, if you hit a massive bump, I mean, that could be game over to your wheels or whatever. So you do have to be a bit bit more careful. Um, but still, it's it's not too bad. So we now have quite a tight left-hander where I end up losing a lot of energy because I, I was quite far behind him and now I have to sprint, sprint to get back up. But you can see this is why it's a bit of a weird climb because, like, the heart rate's now really down. We're going downhill, so the average power might not necessarily be the best way of doing it. I haven't actually checked my normalized power for this effort. Probably should do that. I think it'd be closer to three hundred, maybe three twenty, because there were some good parts where I was hitting, hitting good, good numbers, um, for well over thirty seconds. So that a lot of the ramps I think were thirty seconds a minute, which definitely would increase the normalized power. Because normalized power, if you don't know, it does, basically, 
it's like it's hard to explain uh, briefly, but it basically is like thirty seconds. You put it to the fourth root, then you square root it by the fourth root, and you basically get average of those all added up. Um, so obviously, if the effort is like fifteen seconds, then it doesn't boost normalized power as much. But if it's like thirty seconds, then it's then it does, and that's the rolling thirty second average. Um, so you can see, I then I've had enough. I storm up on my own, or well, not really storm up. I Hit some more right numbers here. We're like up to 320, 340. I didn't really know how long the effort was, so I didn't want to blow myself up. But I knew there were some descents, so I know I could push push a bit harder and then recover from the descents and then push harder. Um, it wasn't a climb where you just, if it's like a, I like flat 5%, flat 7% the whole time, you just hit, sit on like a number and just hold that the whole time. I knew on this climb I needed to put in some surges to keep, keep the momentum going um, as I wouldn't be able to pedal that much on the descent. So you can see it's really nice, really nice road here. We're sort of hooking along 16, 17 k's an hour at 8%, so that's always like, yeah, you know, 5 watts per kilo. It's it's like a quite a nice speed to be going at, you know. It's not to be sniffed at. Like, obviously, it's not it's not full, like not incredible speeds, but it's um, you feel like you're going somewhere. You feel like you're pressing on. And I quite like gravel because it gives you a bit more resistance um, than usual. I think... Oh no, it's going to be a bit later. But we have a special a special guest on the, le the left-hand side, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, which was pretty cute, but so you can see here we sort of I think we've merged onto another road maybe I'm not we're not really sure, uh, but the the climb keeps going so I thought this we were getting towards the end of the climb here but there was a lot a lot more to go a lot more to go we're getting up to eleven percent I decided to get up the saddle because uh, oh, I was just like have no more gears so I sort of have to and so have a look at the little left what do we have we have a little cute koala who's looking pretty cute there um, that was nice nice seeing it. Um, I think I sort of scared off the road, but I think some other people saw it as well. They're pretty friendly around here, and uh, I don't think they're too aggressive. I, I wouldn't really want to go too close because I'm not sure how they behave, but I think I know other people. Like Harley, he's I'm like got koalas like licking his face or whatever, but I'm not sure I'm that brave yet. <laughs> also, I just like, I don't know, their claws are apparently quite bad. But on with the effort, on with the effort, we're still, we're still going up, and here I go, I'm like, all right, you, I've done it. Just chilled out. Quite a nice climb. There's another guy called Dan who's outrageously fast, and he's chasing us. He started about ninety seconds behind, and I'm like, "Yeah, he, here we go." And um, I'm gonna figure out how long this is, but I think it was probably a good twenty seconds or something that I wasted here, um, which I just literally had no idea. I was like, "All right, this is uh, this is pretty chill." And then yeah, so that was fifteen seconds, I think. I just timed it. So, you know, and also the momentum lost so, and the, mon the momentum lost due to me stopping is probably quite a lot. Because if, if I powered over the top and then took some speed into the descent, it would have been quite good. Um, but you can see here, I'm pretty timid on the descent, I'm not going to lie. On, gra on normal road, I'm fine. On gravel, I'm always just a bit, like, sceptical. If I, if I don't know the gravel, like, there's no point decking it because you want to get a KOM or whatever. You might as well just take it, like, 5% slower and the chances of decking it are a lot less. Um, and also, this is no point, um, but it's it's good to practice your descent on gravel. Um, I haven't really done much gravel or mountain biking recently, so I'm sort of out of touch, and also I haven't ridden my tyres that much, but this is the sharp left-hander where I was really like, I could go full gas, but it was quite slippery, and I did, my tire, back tyre started to slide out a little bit, and then up we go, up to 400. I'm not sure what the gradient is doing, it's always just wrong, um, but you can see, yeah, uh, putting some big numbers out here trying to just get back up to speed um and then once it once it sort of once you feel like you're back up to speed just sit back in the saddle and just hold your numbers again but i think one thing i definitely do if you are going to try and get a kom or just get a good time on strava um just make sure you actually know the climb um you know where it's steep you know how to ride it whatever like obviously if it's just an easy fl easy flat climb then you know just sit on what you can do for 5 10 20 minutes or an hour or whatever and then just to see how you feel, but with something like this, you really need to be attacking it and making sure you don't go into the red too early because there'll be some ramps later on. Um, but also making sure you don't hold too much left so you sprint up the last one, but you've lost loads of time. And the other key thing this is the, the, the key pro tip or best bit of advice is make sure you press it, press on over the top of the hill, just a little watt spike, like just bring up, like let's say you're doing 350, just bring up to 500 just over the top. 
and then you'll get you'll suddenly get up to speed and on the descent you'll gain so much speed because then you can just pedal up like softly at one one two hundred two fifty watts and you'll you'll just gain so much speed and on one of these climbs if you can really do that then it's a massive advantage so you know we're going up to fourteen percent here um, I'm struggling. I'm not struggling to hold hold the, the gear, but struggling to try and pace myself so I don't blow up. Because I, I still know I've heard there's some steep ramps at the end. And the gravel's getting a bit bad here, so I was out the saddle. It's a bit slippery, but on the whole, actually, it was quite easy to get out of the saddle. Um, you just have to be a bit more delicate and make really concentrate on your um, putting the when you where you put the power on the pedal and make sure it's quite smooth. Um, also, normally, like the first the first time, like the first pedal stroke outside out of the saddle, is normally the the sort of most likely time that you want to slip. So if you just make sure you don't you don't sprint massively out the saddle and you just try and keep it smooth, then then it's quite quite a good way of doing it. So you can see we've got a bit of a descent here. I'm sort of freewheeling. I thought this might be the end, and then after this kick around, like right, I know where the end is now. It'll be a, it won't be one of these little kickers because this is what I got told about before from the other people on the ride. So you can you can see we're pushing up to 400 watts, just trying to keep the momentum going, um, because. Otherwise, you just got no chance. Like if you just tried to hold like three hundred watts the whole time up here, let's say you'd go so much slower than just massively spiking the watts. But I know here, I look look at the watts; they go so slowly, and I'm like still thirteen, fourteen. But if I put a little watt spike in, I'd be up to like twenty k's an hour, twenty five k's an hour, and then on the descent, I would have gained a lot of time. Because even on the descent, like I wasn't going absolutely full gas, um, which I could have done. I think one of these these climbs are really good to do full gas to just to see how your pacing strategy is and seeing like if you can recover from those hard anaerobic efforts because when you go hard but no one's really pushing you you don't really go on the limit but if suddenly Dan who was trying to chase me down if he'd suddenly pop past now I would have been right on his wheel and just trying to hold it to the end and that would have um, increased my power a lot more but now I'm sort of like chilling out because I know well I know no one's going to overtake me and I know like technically the competition isn't the people on your ride but like you have that mental side of it where you're just like, can't really be bothered. Like, it'll be quite nice to get a good time, but like, I'm hurting a bit now. Um, I'll just I'll just do the minimum I have to do um, to make sure I get up there um, first. Well, obviously, it's not really first because the Dan, who definitely would have dropped me, he, um, he started like 90 seconds to a minute further back and he finished about 20 seconds to 30 seconds behind me. So he probably did it at least... 30 to a, seconds to a minute. I'm not exactly sure the Strava times that he did, but they will be on the end. Uh, I can have a little look, actually. He did a 12.39, and I did a 14, I think. Uh, I think that's right, if that's from today. So he put, like, a minute or so on me, um, which was a, which is a solid effort from him. And you can see, again, these little steep ramps. I'm really 60 cadence. This is why you just need more more cassettes. Um, you need a bigger cassette, sorry, Um because you just can't really get up these gravel climbs unless you are really pushing out big numbers and here like 50 cadence I'm like out the saddle just rocking and this is where this is where it really saps your legs and stops your ability to like later on let's say it was a race or even just later on in the effort to um put out big numbers again but I mean the thing is in order to spin up these climbs you do really need like a one to one ratio I think I think that would be the best way of doing it and then you could easily maintain a cadence of at least 80 to 90 because uh, we're going like 8k is an hour here, so you do need very low gearing. Um, and this isn't, I don't think this is the last ramp, or it might be. We're going to have a check. Yeah, it is. We're coming up to the last ramp. So that, was, I think, was the hardest part, basically. It ramped up to about 50, 15 to 20%. Um, it's still quite steep here, and I haven't really recovered yet. As you can see, like, if I had better cadence there, I would have then just been able to hold the watts a lot more. But instead, I had to put quite a lot of power just to try and keep myself going and keep my cadence actually above, like, 40 and then it meant the very last part where it kicks up. I couldn't sprint at like 800 watts. I was just chilling, trying to be like, I'm not chilling, just trying to like keep myself from falling over or whatever. Um, so we get to the end of the line. I don't know where the finish line is. I guess it's probably here or where we hit the road, but around these parts. But it was a really nice climb. Uh, thanks to the guys for showing me that, as I don't think I would have found it otherwise. Um, but there's loads of gravel tracks in Adelaide. So if you were in Adelaide, I'd definitely give them a try. Um, they're really nice and very uh different to riding on the road and um they're very free of traffic so cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next vid